Hey guys, welcome back to Umix Cocktails. Thank you for, for following me on that last video. I had, a, had an update video go up and I just wanted to talk a little bit about rum. In this case, rum is, is, is such a beautiful spirit and I can argue that it is the most beautiful spirit in the world. It has a very rich, robust history, to say the least, and it is a very dark history. We'll cover a little more of the history later, but rum, what is rum? See, a lot of people, a lot of us have that, that misunderstanding of what rum really is, and, and I want to just shed some light on that. So rum, by definition, is a distillate of sugar cane, nothing else. There are a few other people out there that I know that they're making sugar beet rum, which is another big thing in, in, back in, in Europe. Sugar beets were, were used and distilled to make rum, but the traditional, traditional rum is from sugar cane. So that being said, there are different, there are over 50 countries that make rum. The thing with rum is it's not regulated, hence there are so many producers across the whole world that it's not regulated and it's not classified well enough for us to deeply understand. Just to put it into perspective, there's bourbons, right? Bourbons are, are, are phenomenal spirit. And bourbons are put into a category and they're heavily regulated in the United States. Of course, Kentucky is the bourbon capital of the world. So that being said, bourbon has regulations. It needs to be 51% corn. It needs to be aged at a certain amount of time. What I'm trying to get at is rum does not have any regulation. So how could we enforce the rum, right? The spirit of rum. For example, the rums I have here, there are two rums, for example, this one and this one, Havana Club three year and a Centenario from Costa Rica nine year. It's a commemorative bottle. It's an anniversary, right? They, they've been around for, for uh, over a hundred years. These two rums, for example, are, are pretty interesting. Now there are blended rums, Right, which is primarily the, the kinds of rums that we see. We see blended rums, we see single cask rums, which are a little more rare, just because it depends on the climate. I mean, it, for example, there's, a, there's a, a cask of rum aging. I mean, this is really impossible. I'll tell you, it's impossible to see a rum 20 years aged in a bottle, right? From cask to bottle, it's just impossible because normally we see the Caribbean and different hotter climates where this rum is being aged. So. That being said, it's, it's really, really not likely for us to see an aged rum, single cask, 20 years. It's normally blended. So if you have an, a rum that's aged at least 10 years, for example, what the producers will do, the rum master blenders, is get a, the rum, the 10-year-old rum, 20% of the blend will be that rum. This is arbitrary. But 20% of that rum will be in the blend. And then the rest of the blend is using older rums, right? Older rums, things like that. Normally, that's that's what will be. It's the it's the 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 thing about the rum industry is that the numbers are a little bit misleading, and it's unfortunate to hear that. So there, if you see a number, let's say twenty one on a bottle or or twenty three, sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean twenty three years. It just a number. And what I'm calling for is more specification on the bottles. There needs to be classification and specification. You can tell how passionate I am about this. It's really, really, it, it, uh, it's gut-wrenching, really, how much the industry has deviated downward due to these misleading labels. And there are classic, timeless brands, like this one right here, Grand Matusalem. They've been around for at least 180 years. It's, it's phenomenal. I mean, the, it's a family heritage and it's something that, that I, people like me are very excited about. I'm sure you rum drinkers out there, you know who you are. This is the kind of rum that you would sip on, right? It's a beautifully crafted rum. See, it says 18 year solera. That's another word that's thrown out there that's unfortunately misused, right? It's misleading. There are a lot of consumers out there that, that would like to see a rum that wow, it's, it's aged for, for 20 plus years and it's just phenomenal and it's so that I aged. But since there's no regulations, they can put anything on a label so long as it meets the criteria of the United States government and otherwise. 
the most heavily regulated areas, for example, of rum, I would say Martinique, Barbados, Jamaica, they have strict guidelines and things that you can never do to the rum that's made in, the, in that territory. For example, Jamaica, you can never add sugar to your rum. There are a lot of producers out there that make sugar. They put sugar, added sugar or caramel color into the rum. There is a, there's an excellent example, I don't have it with me today, Appleton Estate that does not add any color whatsoever. I know Matusalem is a very genuine brand and they, they're a timeless brand and they're well known. They have traditions of making rum that's, that are very different. They're very different than other countries. For example, Venezuela, I don't have a Venezuelan rum, but Diplomatico and, and a few of the other brands that come from Venezuela, it's part of the tradition to add sugar to the rum. They believe it, it adds complexity, it adds a different character, and it opens up the rum in a whole new way. Now, you might be asking, well, John, if, uh, if you think that additives to rum is a bad thing, then why do they, I mean, why do they do it? And why, why is, are they accepted? See, the thing is, I am just one person, and humbly, I can definitely say that I'm just one person advocate for rum and for pure rum, in fact. It's very rare nowadays in this market, unregulated to see pure rum. And, and that being said, I, I get it to all those people that like the sugar in the rums in Venezuela, all my respect and love to them. However, the rum that I could get behind are the rums that have no sugar added in them. The purest rum possible. And see, I guess it comes from really the appreciation of the other spirit categories that have been beautifully crafted and beautifully taken care of. Rum is considered the Wild West of all the spirits categories, and, and I get it. I get why, because again, it's not regulated, and people can just do whatever they please. Rum, again, has a very dark history, which we'll cover in another video, but this is just covering, the skimming the surface of what rum really is. Rum is used in many different ways, also. It's used for mixing, it's used for, I mean, even in the fragrance industry. Rum all over the world is just, it's, it's, it's crazy because sugarcane, going back to full circle, the sugarcane, it is the best renewable, one of the best renewable resources in the world. It's a, it's a grass, right? Sugarcane is a grass, just much like bamboo. It's a grass that grows up to 20 feet tall and it's renewable. You cut it at the, at the stalk and then the stalk just grows back. There's no need for replanting every year or anything of the sort. So it's beautiful and sugarcane was used many, many times. I mean, again, we'll cover the history later, but sugarcane distillate is, is just, it's just misunderstood, really. I think it's, it's beautiful. I'm a fan of sipping rums, to be very frank. But if we're mixing rums, right, in cocktails, again, it's beautiful because rum has an amazing, amazing texture, amazing character. I don't want to be biased in this channel. I really don't, and I'm not going to be, because again, being a, a former bartender and still working with cocktails as a mixologist, I appreciate all spirits categories. They're all beautiful. I hope that that touches, it skims the surface. We covered a lot of stuff, and I'm gonna do my best to, to really, I'm gonna split up the rum. I'm gonna do different videos for the rum category. I'm gonna be doing interviews with people, just talking about the rum category in general, seeing what the response is, and as well as any other category, I'm gonna be bringing people, like other bartenders, other mixologists, other experts in the field. I'm gonna do my best to bring you guys value. In the meantime, of course, I'll be mixing cocktails for you guys just to give you some ideas as to what can be used in each category. So which cocktails can be used for each category. I'll set it up, put the playlist together for you guys. So again, I want to thank you guys for, for following me, being here on Umix Cocktails. I realize that the, the foundation, right, understanding the spirits categories before we even touch it or put it in a cocktail, we understand the spirits categories and we're starting out with rum, right? Rum is just one of them, gin, there's vodka. We're gonna talk about all of those different categories so we can start to build. So thank you again, I'm super excited. This is Jonathan Echavarria with You Mix Cocktails, helping you mix better cocktails. I'll see you in the next video, thank you.